Uh, good morning everyone welcome to a chipping video today we tried to get down early before the rain comes but it's a pretty wild morning and very windy so i know some of you have been struggling uh, hearing me speak in some of the other videos and i'll speak as loudly as i can uh, but you know it is november and you know we've either got to do this or, or not do it um, some of them will be inside going forward but i want to do two or three more ones outside so today we're covering what i call a bump and run or chip and run the other day we did a, a lob shot over a bunker where we were forced to use uh, a lofty club like a lob wedge there was very little green to work with and so on but here today we've got the whole of the green to play with and there's about 50 or 60 feet of level green then it goes up a rise and let's assume the pin is on the top level now we could obviously use a, a lofty club and lob it all the way which would be quite a risky shot and not a percentage shot so I'd rather get the ball on the green and running uh, using a straighter face club. Uh, I use an 8-iron for these shots, but whether you use a 7-iron, 9-iron, 8-iron or whatever, that's up to you. But I'd suggest you get used to one club and get used to the strength of that club. So for me, as I said, it's an 8-iron. The ball's slightly above my feet here, so I'm going to go down the grip a little bit. And I'm going to use a very, very uh, tiny swing. Again, the hands are passive. Don't confuse that with being stiff. I'm not going to do it like a putting stroke. We might get away with that if the ball's lying on a very high bit of tufty bit of grass, but this is quite a tight line. I still want to come down with a slightly descending blow. So again, that the hands will hinge slightly with the weight of the club. There's no conscious wrist cock. There's no consciously trying to stop them breaking. I'm just going to let the weight of the club dictate its own path. So you can come in a little bit closer. Ben is my cameraman today, trying to shield the iPad from the wind using his, his bulk although it's a very slim bulk. So here we go with this little shot. So again, down the grip of the club because the ball's closer to me. Very, very toned down address. I'm gonna have a little bit more weight on the left side, so I'm leaning slightly into the shot. Uh, there's gonna be hardly any movement, although again, I'm not trying not to move. It's just a tiny swing, so there'll be minimal movement in the body, but I wanna stay very, very centered over it. The key with these is to keep a really even rhythm. Because it's such a short shot, it's very easy to jab it and be quick with it so I'm going to try and keep it as smooth as I can and again try not to let the club head go past my hands which is the most common error and that's when we tend to thin it or catch the ground behind the ball so a tiny little backswing okay keeping the hands ahead of the club head as I hit the ball I'm speaking to you from this angle only today again because of the wind so we're going to just film it from the down uh, from the plain view so here we go tiny little swing little practice swing first and we're going to try and pitch it about halfway up the green and then let it run up the slope. Okay, and another one. So the second one was a better quality strike. Uh, it just nipped into the ground. There's a little bit of spin on the ball. So when it landed, it checked and then ran. Whether I judge it properly or not, of course, that's down to practice and for all of us to practice, but at least I've struck the ball OK. So a little chip and run. Now, if you're not really confident using a club like an 8-iron or 9-iron, uh, there is the option of chippers or jiggers, as we used to call them. When I started golf in the 70s, they were incredibly popular uh, and they're still around. They're so inexpensive and because they've got such a wide, flat sole on them we can, and it's got about the loft of a 7-iron, we can use them now as a putting stroke. We don't need any hand action because this is going to come in uh, level to ground uh, level and we can just literally pick it off the top like a putting stroke. So you can use even a putting grip on them if you wish. Just a, a basic putting action and let the loft of the club do the job. So we'll have a go at this. So very, very simple shot. If you're worried about digging into the ground or thinning the ball, these are a really good option. They're very inexpensive, between 25 and 30 pounds. Um, and if that's something that you're interested in, let me know. So hopefully that will help you with the chip and run, bump and runs. This course here, because it's a linksy type course, lends itself to a lot of these shots. And I know a lot of the good players here run it up from 30, 40, 50, 60 yards off the green, depending on the topography and the terrain. Um, but it's a shot we need to get used to. If you're watching the Masters at the moment, like all of us, they hit it all over the place off the tee sometimes, um, but their short games hold their scores together generally, and that's what they practice the most. Okay, hope that will help you. See you soon. Bye-bye.